In our fictitious mission, air troop have been dropped behind enemy lines. Patrol Commander Eddie is first on the ground. He buries his parachute and then heads off for the first rendezvous. I'm in location now, waiting for the rest of the team to come in. There's a gap of probably 50 to 60 metres between each person as they're coming in. So it will take them a little bit of time to move into this area, where I will pick them up. When they come in, I will then place them down all around the fence to form a protective barrier around our first RV point. It'll be some time before Eddie knows whether all his patrol have survived the drop. These men have had to free fall from 35,000 feet and land in a hostile drop zone, all at night. Just some of the skills expected of air troop. Every SAS soldier is trained to make parachute drops. It is, after all, the special air service. This, for most part, involves static line jumps, where the parachute opens automatically on leaving the plane. Air troop, however, are trained to master the art of free fall as well as using a parachute. It requires altogether more nerve and skill. During his time with the regiment, this was Eddie's speciality. The main difference between air troop and the rest of the squadron is we are trained as a specialist infiltration skill in high altitude parachuting. There are two methods of high altitude infiltration. They are known as hey-ho and hey-lo. Hey-ho, or high altitude opening, is generally the preferred option. After a short free fall, the parachute is opened. Using modern ram air parachutes, the soldier can silently glide themselves into the target. Using a ram air parachute and the jet stream, he can insert across a border. In hey low or high altitude low opening, the troop free fall from as high as 35,000 feet, only opening their parachute at around 2,000 feet. It's swift and it's silent. The main advantage of Halo is that when you land on the ground, you'll all be within a very, very short distance of each other. With Halo, you can end up being spread out a good distance across the country. But before they even step out of the plane, they have to check and double-check that they've got the right kit for the mission. Helmet. Obviously, to protect the most important part of your body, your brain. Oxygen mask. The reason for the oxygen, if you're jumping at 25, 35,000 feet, obviously there's very little oxygen there. OK. It gets very cold up there, so it's very important you wear gloves, good thermal suit, main parachute, reserve parachute in the top. It's got a little tag on it. If that's not there, don't jump with that parachute. It's the main handle, reserve handle. This is where your equipment gets attached to. This strap is attached and pulls the oxygen bottle close in and tight to the leg. It's also used for holding the weapon in position. This equipment weighs about 40, 45 pounds. When you've got 120 pound Bergen on top of that, getting to the edge of the aircraft, pitch black at night, you've got to waddle to the edge and basically drop yourself off. Free falling at 35,000 feet with weapons and a Bergen full of equipment would be suicidal if the trooper hadn't spent months training for it, mastering the technique. What he's trying to do at this stage is create symmetry in all parts of his body. His head must be in an upright position. Because of the weight of his head, if he bends his head forward and he's looking down, he will start to tumble forward. Three. If he wants to turn right and face into the group, all he has to do is bring in his right arm and his body will automatically turn round to the right. He can do the same movements by using his legs. If he straightens his left leg, he will then spin to the right. When he's jumping, we're jumping from 25,000 feet in an operation, then we will be wearing equipment. That is going to create more drag, so he will extend his arms out in the front of his body. If the Bergen moves position at any time, it can cause the free fall off to start spinning. This is a very dangerous thing to happen. If you get into a spin when you leave the aircraft at 25,000 feet, you've got a long way down before your parachute's going to open, another 23,000 feet. By that time, you're going to be rotating faster than the eye can see. I have seen people landing on the ground with their eyes 
completely bloodshot because all the capillaries in her eyes have burst. So he must adjust his position to compensate for any movement in the Bergen. There is one other position you can use, which is cracking, and that enables you to move across the sky. A bit like Superman in some respects, but not quite the same. You can still hit the ground. And at 25,000 feet, he will be motoring along somewhere around 180 to 200 mile an hour. When deployed, the ram air parachute quickly inflates. It then acts as a rigid wing. The trooper steers himself using left and right toggles towards the landing zone. You want to turn left, pull down your left steering toggle. What that does, it shuts off the air to the left-hand side of the parachute, causing it to rotate around to the left. As he approaches the ground, he has a new problem to consider when to drop the heavy Bergen. For stability during freefall and the parachute descent, it's been strapped to the back of the legs. Approximately 1,000 feet, we start looking for wind direction indicators. In other words, smoke coming out of chimneys, where there may be trees blowing, what direction the wind's coming from. He's got to land his parachute into wind. As he comes into land, he slides his Bergen down to the end of his legs. To touch down safely, he has to release it onto a line. Timing is critical. If he lets go too early, it will act as a pendulum, causing the trooper to lose control. 10, 15 feet off the ground, he will flick the Bergen off his feet and let it land on the ground nice and gently. The reason for this is he may have equipment in there, maybe a laser target marker, maybe binoculars in there that we require for the operation. If he lets it hit the ground at high speed as he's coming into land, it can damage the equipment in the Bergen. When you're coming into land, you guide yourself into wind, play the canopy down, it'll shut off the air, but the canopy will sit back. And you should land on the ground nice and gently, if you do it properly. Finally, the trooper has to hide his parachute before continuing with the rest of his mission. <laughs> 